Yeah, it will it will be brought in so that we can have it as we uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, welcome to the panel. Thank you. Uh, the first thing that you must do is to tell us who you are. We don't know you. Um, what 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 interest do you have in SABC? Why why did you apply? Uh, what what? what drove you to apply here. But also if um, you, can, you can share with us whatever interest or conflict of interest you have, uh, that may jeopardize your, um, your way through uh, the board uh, and all of that so that uh, when members ask questions, uh, in relation to that, you are not surprised. Um, you will have five minutes to talk about yourself. And when, when members ask questions, uh, we'll use five minutes for both questions and your responses. So always for, uh, remember that you have five minutes to share in that process with, with a member who asks questions. Over to you, sir. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is John Madison. I'm, uh, uh, my history is I started as a political journalist on the Ron Daily Mail. Um, I've been a political journalist, a foreign correspondent, uh, um, uh, and I've been a broadcaster, and I was a regulator in the time of President Mandela. Um, uh, you, Mr. Madison, can you hear? Oh, okay, okay. No, it's all right. Uh, oh, I can, I can, definitely, yeah. I can, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, I was uh, blacklisted by the SABC the whole time I was a journalist uh, and uh, here in South Africa. And uh, I, I became a public broadcaster in a... Um, I was hired in Washington and sent back to South Africa in the 1980s by National Public Radio. So that's, so I had six years of experience as a public broadcaster for them, and then I did quite a bit of television for public broadcasting there. So I have a great love for public broadcasting. And so when we were contemplating the change in South Africa prior to 1994, a group of us set up something called the Public Broadcasting uh, Initiative to prepare for public broadcasting in South Africa and to make the change from a state broadcaster to a, an independent public broadcaster, and uh, we did that. Um, so uh, I have a lot of experience in the area, I, and I'm, I'm very committed to it. I, I think that the, um, a good public broadcaster in South Africa can do an enormous amount for South Africa. Um, and I'm committed to doing that. Um, I also, in 1994, uh, I, I ran the election coverage. I was brought in from the blacklist to be someone who, who had broadcasting experience and who was trusted enough to be fair. So I ran the election coverage for all the radio, 23 radio stations in those days of the SABC in 1994. And uh, we were pretty proud that we'd been able to change the SABC substantially for the time we had available. I came in uh, the same day as uh, Zolaki Sisulu. And um, uh, I believe that people do remember 1994 and the SABC in a positive way. Um, I was asked to become head of news then, but in that, during that time I was, um, approach I was nominated for what is now a CASA uh, councillor, but was then called the Independent Broadcasting Authority. So I, sp I, I was uh, appointed to that. I spent four years doing that uh, under President Mandela, and that's when we, um, uh, I oversaw the establishment of this. This is the triple inquiry report into broadcasting in South Africa, uh, which, is st which was adopted fully by Parliament with some minor amendments, and I think still uh, is substantially national policy on broadcasting. Um, we can talk about what changed and what should have should have been done differently now, but by and large, that's what happened and that's what worked. 
Um, as to uh, conflicts, I, I don't have any conflicts. When I became uh, an interim board member, as you know, five months ago, I, re I resigned my... T I had a television show in, in here in the Cape Town Television. I was the producer and, and presenter for that, and I loved it, but I gave it up. Uh, not because there was much money in it, but because I felt it would be perceived as a possible conflict of interest. So sadly, I've stopped my television career. I've also stopped the journalism I was writing because I don't think it's a direct conflict of interest, but I don't think you want to see an SABC board member in Daily Maverick uh, taking sides in political battles. So I've stopped that too. Uh, what, I, what remains is I, I wrote a book uh, which deals with media and politics. I, I, I published it through my own company and that's still ongoing. I don't think there's any conflict in any of those things. Thank you very much, members. We will be ready. Let me, let me, what, what I'm going to read or raise for Mr. Matheson applies to the five interim board members. There is, an, there, is, there is a comment from the public that says all of them must not be appointed. I'm just raising that. Uh, and, this, and this person who, who wrote here, he says on or up about 20th May, uh, the tender was presented is a is a person in tenders. Uh, the tender was presented to the bid adjudication committee for recommendation to EXCO and the board for final approval. The BAC, which is a bid adjudication committee, requested internal audit to review the process followed by SCM in the tender evaluation and in June 2017. Internal audit reported that all processes as per National Treasury had been correctly followed and the tender could be awarded to Mjaeli Security as they were the highest ranking bidder in terms of the 9010 principle as prescribed by the PPF, triple PFA. So it applies to all of them. This uh, comment, it applies to the entire interim board. I felt I must, I must read this uh, because uh, it's, it's one thing that came from public uh, against all board members. Right, can I, uh, can I start with, uh, there have been a request here. Can I start with uh, Honorable Van Dam. Um, not necessarily start with opposition, start with you as a panelist. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm looking forward to the answer to the chairperson's question about that security tender. Um, and then um, what do you think, so you've been serving on the interim board and we've said that you um, as a team have done a great job. Um, what for you has been your single biggest success? And what do you think is, has been um, a failure by the interim board? Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, on the security tender, I do remember it, uh, um, but I can't remember too much detail. I know my colleagues were very involved in it and they'll tell you more. Um, there was a close t uh, a, a decision between two different companies, um, but I, I, can't, I, can't, I just can't recall the details of it, but I know my, my colleagues will, will be able to respond to it. Um, biggest success, you, you know, it's, uh, Honourable Van Damme, it's difficult to say one thing. I do feel we've changed the image of the SABC and arguably that's the most important. People know that at least at board level and as far as we're able to be in control, um, they're not being interfered with and, and we protect, we're protective as, as far as we can of, of, of people's situations. Financially, this is a very big thing. We've, we've, we, we, we took over a, uh, an SABC that was like a jet 
uh, heading for a crash, and we've been able to tip, tip the nose of the, of the plane so that it's now more or less going even. That was a massive thing financially, and, and you, know, you know the figures. We, we, uh, 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 since we last were here, the, the uh, uh, TV licenses uh, collections have improved even further. Ad revenue is coming back. Um, biggest failure, I, I, I see a trend, tremendous potential in uh, uh, low-hanging low fruit in things like SABC3, for example, which could become far more uh, a, a place where South Africans meet each other and hear each other and, and everybody goes back to watching it uh, through creative programming, both domestic and foreign, that raises debates so that the SABC becomes the venue for debate in South Africa. And I don't feel we've really been able to get to that creative level the way I would have really liked to do. Thanks. Uh, so for, for me, what is very important uh, uh, when appointing people to the SABC board, um, I'm quite keen to appoint people who are have you know, the backbones of steel, who can withstand political pressure, who when they have to make a choice, they will side with the SABC and protecting what is in essence a national asset. So in your time that you've been uh, on the interim board, have there be, been instances where there was any political pressure and how did you deal with that pressure? Thank you, uh, Honorable Van Dam. Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's common cause that the parliament has been tremendously supportive and hasn't interfered at all. Um, uh, uh, yes, I, that, that, that I, I can say, and it's greatly appreciated. Uh, other than that, there's been, there's been nothing significant. Um, uh, uh, but it's, one, one gets signals indirectly that maybe people would like things uh, to be a bit different, but nothing really direct. But I think it may be because it's, it's understood that I'm <laughs> not, not, uh, not uh, responsive to, to that kind of pressure. <laughs> I'm afraid I want to ask you to elaborate. Um, what do you mean? Well, um, how can I answer that? I think one gets the sense that some people would like a more um, um, uh, a, 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 a more, more sort of a partisan engagement in the politics of the country. But we, you know, w w all I can say is we 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 spoke in public to all the journalists, and we said we don't know what's going to happen to the politics of South Africa, nor do you. Don't anticipate. Cover everybody based on news value and let the results speak for themselves. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, three, it's three seconds. You can't do anything in three seconds. Okay, Honorable Davis. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr. Matheson, for availing yourself. Um, I've got two questions which I'll ask um, one after the other, and then you can answer them both at the same time. Um, the first one is, as you noted in your introduction, um, in the post uh, Zwilake Sisulu era, the SABC under every successive board has been implicated in political interference, uh, poor financial management, if not outright fraud and corruption. So there seems to be a systemic problem at the heart of this. What do you think is the root of the problem, and how do you think it would be fixed? What we seem to see is we have these interim boards coming into mop-up after these permanent boards mess things up. So how are we going to avoid, this time around, the situation where the permanent board pretty much unstitches all of the work that the interim board has done? So th that's my first question. Um, my second question is around uh, the political interference in the SABC. Um, you say there's been minimal political interference, although you do imply there has been some um, attempts. Um, but we obviously, before your time, there was a, it was an era where there was much more overt political interference, um, where we had the figure of Claudio Motswaneng, who was a political deployee, he was in cahoots with the minister, and he was doing the bidding of a particular faction um, of the ruling party. 
Now, I'd like to ask you what you would have done if you were on the board at that particular time when the public protector released her report into um, Claudia Motswening's fraudulent activities and the bullying and the intimidation and all of the rest of it. What would you have done um, in the face of a minister who refused to, well, at least the minister who was blocking the SABC board's attempts to um, implement the recommendations? What would you have done as an individual on the board to try and get those um, recommendations implemented? Thank you. Uh, I, I, I think I can no, answer... No, no, before that, Mr. Matheson, before that. Uh, questions are okay, but I, it, it's going to be clumsy if you get into dynamics of political organization, factions in the ruling party and all that. I don't think that language will assist us. I'll stop it even if it comes from uh, any quarter, because I don't think we must get in, into factions of political party, especially when you say uh, the ruling party. I don't think it will be fair for the committee to listen to uh, such allegations, even if you, have, you, are, you are very strong on them, but not in the panel. Thank you very much. Over to you, Mr. Matheson. Thank you, Chair. I, I think I can actually give, give you an answer that includes uh, uh, um, Honourable Van Damme's question. Um, once we took over, we found that, that actually inside the organisation there is a problem, and there was a problem in news. Um, I don't want to name names, but there were people who saw it still as their job to serve some political agenda. And you can imagine what that is relating to, to the past regime. Um, and we were not able to move any faster, but I believe that problem has been mostly resolved. Uh, that, that's, that's a serious issue. We, we, we had to look at were the top people in news really people who have journalism exper expertise and were there for their expertise and experience, or were they put there to serve a political purpose, and there were some like that. Uh, I think at this stage we, we're quite comfortable, and I think you will notice quite an improvement in, in the news uh, in, in more recent times. I don't think I should be more specific about naming names. Um, and, and that, I think, helps start to answer uh, um, your questions. Um, why does the SABC uh, keep going down? I, you know, I researched this and studied this uh, when I was writing my book. I think the key to it is chronic instability. You get a good board. Um, Vincent Mapai's board, for instance, was an excellent board, or he, he was an excellent chair. I didn't know the others. He was excellent. But then you get, so you get good people. Zuilaki Susulu, I had the greatest admiration for. Uh, but then you get a new board, which is almost entirely new, and with, you know, and new ministers and so on. So my appeal would be, if anything, um, from my own experience, is to say, whether you choose me or not, keep uh, some continuity. Uh, um, uh, people who've done this work, it's taken us five months to understand many things in, in the SABC. Um, uh, I got back at midnight last night from working on some things relating to the ad hoc committee uh, uh, um, uh, a, a report that you that is really a big part of our mandate. Um, those things, some of them in supply chain management and so on, they're not simple. New people come in; it will take them time to to uh, to get on on top of it. So I think political interference obviously is is very very damaging, um, but but stability. And, and the, the atmosphere that this committee has created, uh, I think, would be conducive to that security. And I, I just want to add one thing. The SABC should be probably close to double its size. It's, it, it should have grown far more, and it will grow far more, if, if, we, if we are able to keep the, the direction we're on and, and, and have your support. And it will have a, a far greater positive influence, not in a partisan way, but in elevating the debate in the country in all sorts of ways. So, so that's all doable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we have, we have, we have had the two panelists. Can I go to Honorable Maddisha and come back this way? Uh, 
Honorable Davis will come in when uh, you are making a follow-up. Honorable Matisha. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, it's quite difficult, um, you know, raising these questions with the, because of the experience. I mean, I, some of us who were there in the 80s do know uh, the kind of uh, contribution he did make. But then I must say that which you have raised, Chairperson, one wants to specify to say uh, thanks for the contribution that they've made uh, during this particular time. I think uh, that comes properly, really, uh, from your voice. And uh, uh, we, I mean, from my side, I uh, go with that. Uh, you see, one of my colleagues here spoke about the political interference. And I think this is extremely, extremely uh, important. Yes, you have indicated uh, that you moved out at some stage uh, because you did not want to uh, put your hand in the whole thing or to be blamed by those who would uh, have risen to say um, you are involved in political interference, blah, 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 and so on. But you see, as they say, politics is the art of the game, okay? And that is a fact, that, uh, I mean, if you look at uh, uh, section 13.4, uh, 3C of the Broadcasting Act, okay, that which we are supposed to do, that which, um, you are supposed to do if you are appointed to that particular uh, uh, board. But perhaps I need to help you there because we may not be having it there. It actually talks about uh, you know, accountability, making sure that the people get access without interference from the uh, uh, political uh, side and so on and so on. Uh, and I think you do understand what I'm referring to. How are you going to deal with that? Because yes, we may rise and say, uh, we uh, say uh, we shall not be pushed by the political uh, interference. But once you are there, you get involved in that kind of uh, a situation. Uh, how are you going to deal with that? And I'm not saying that uh, that, as the chairperson says, and I agree with him, today, uh, it may be tomorrow, it may be day after tomorrow. And uh, you may be, if the board, I mean, if the committee here were to say, you are a member of the board, okay, you may be there for the next 10 years or even more. Now, how are you going to deal with this thing? Okay, and I'm talking from experience, and you know the experience that we both shall rise and talk about. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Honorable Medisha. So you'll have to be very careful. You, 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 you are left with one minute. Ah, okay. The member took four minutes, so. <laughs> Honorable Medisha, I'll, I'll answer very quickly. There's, there is a correct way to do this, and this is the way we've got to get to, and that is, any politician who has a complaint about how they are treated in the SABC must be able to call the SABC, preferably at the highest level, either the editor in chief, the, the top, top head of news or even the, the GCEO. And that person must take the call, must look into it, and, and find out if there was unfairness and deal with it. That's the correct way to do it, and that's what we will argue for. Uh, that's what I will, I will push, and we, that's, that's, I, I don't know if we're exactly there yet, but that's, ex that's the only way it can be done in a fair, professional way. Thank No, no. no, no. <laughs> uh, Honorable Machoba? I'm, I'm coming this way now. Thank you, Chair. 
And thank you very much to avail yourself, John. Thank you. Uh, to be in front of this committee. This committee is familiar to face at your eyes. Uh, currently, you are a, a, a board, a, 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 a serving in that board, interim board. And I want to know in your experience as an acting board, <coughs> You are the board member, uh, interim board members of five. Is there any teamwork in that inter uh, in interim board and board members? Uh, what are you you achieving uh, as from this five months you are there as a board member? And also, to my understanding, I know that teamwork skills being a good team member means being able to uh, clearly communicate your ideas within the colleagues and convey the, the, the information. How do you implement, uh, uh, <coughs> how do you implement your skills to your colleagues uh, what I, 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 I could see in your, in your CV is very fat. And I was asking myself, because I was checking your age, uh, to go abroad to have this kind of experience. Maybe you left something in, 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 in SAPC, whether you have been chosen or yes or no. It will depend to my colleagues. Uh, lastly, Chair, I don't think I have much more than I want uh, Ujon to tell us about the experience of working as a teamwork in the, in, in, in the interim board. Also, uh, just as, as for a joke, uh, in your experience, because I was reading your, your CV, uh, I'm just uh, concerned about my personal concern. Do not repent, because you know everyone in the country. Do you know? <laughs> Mr. Rupeng. There's a man that called the repent. Is repent? Is a repent? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm just asking <laughs> as a joke. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, uh, teamwork, uh, on, on, uh, Matosh, Machoba, uh, I, I must say it's been an honor to work with our group of, of, of uh, four other interim board members. We have worked as a team. In fact, I didn't know most of them. The only one I knew slightly beforehand was Matata Tsedu and I'd met Krish many years ago. We, we, we have worked as a team, and uh, we, we argue and we vote against each other, but then we, we work as Democrats and we cooperate. And I have to say that's because I trust the integrity of all my colleagues. We may disagree, but it's, but it's a, a disagreement with integrity in the best interests of the SABC. Um, what have we achieved? I, I, I really think we've... we've Stop the fall in the SABC uh, financial. We've, we've, we've already done the interviews for the appointments for um, several of the senior executives. If those go through, we've also, you know, done all the work to get the Treasury um, uh, um, uh, guarantee done. If, if all of the, those things go through, I would say we took over a broadcaster in, in real crisis and we're, we will do a proper handover to the new board, whether we're on it or not, with detailed information about the auditing situation, the financial situation, and they will be able to hit the ground running. So I, I think that's probably, a, as far as I can go, in the limited amount of time. Um, in terms of um, communicating, you know, we, we've done the interviews and we found first-rate uh, uh, potential black 
South African executives to come in and take over the SABC, who are creative, who are ready, who understand the new digital age, the fourth industrial revolution, and so on. I will work with them if I'm uh, fortunate enough to be back on the board. I think I can still offer some insights. Uh, we, we don't have to look as much to Hollywood as we do for our foreign um, um, uh, um, fiction that we have on television. Where there are other places. I worked in Afghanistan. There's programming in India and other places when you want, you don't have to go to Hollywood for everything. So I, I do think there's still something I have to offer, and I would be more than happy. The people I've seen, I would be very, very happy to see the SNC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Honorable Tolas. Honourable Chairperson, good afternoon, Mr. Matheson. Good afternoon. Once again, I really need to thank you and your colleagues on the good, good work that you managed to do within a very short space of time under very difficult circumstances. Thank you. You really served your country in that space. Having been in the SAPC interim board, uh, talking about very pertinent issue of 9010, that talks to the most vulnerable people in our country who still needs us, especially the SABC. What is your take? Because the policy, however it was introduced, for me I think it's relevant, but I would want to hear more from you. What does it, how does it impact on those people's lives individually? But how did it impact to the SABC itself? The other question is, now that you are aware of everything else about SABC, should, would you suggest that the SABC should be sold out, as other people are suggesting so? I'm asking you this question directly because I understand you are the most experienced and you are better person because you are sitting in the interim board. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honourable Talash. Um, first of all, uh, 9010, how did it impact the SABC? Well, as you know, there was no planning to it. This, this document was the first local content ruling in South Africa and was very well prepared and researched and it was very successful. The music industry grew. This 9010 one, because it was not planned or researched, it caught, brought a big downturn in finances for the SABC, but I'll tell you something else it did. It caused a downturn in the finances for new musicians because when the audiences go down, the revenues go down and the share to music Musicians also goes down. So it looked very good on paper and you could make a fuss about it, but it was counterproductive. So we have, we have had to relook at it, but of course it must always go up. When we started in 1995, we said 20% local content. Since then, there have been many uh, changes in the policy. It's been increased. Now, it's, now we're talking about 60, 65%. So you can do it in a planned way that is very effective. Um, as far as selling the SABC, no, I don't think so. If you sell the SABC, where will be the Chivenda or the Sepedi radio? The market won't provide enough finances for those radio stations or television. You have to have a public broadcast in South Africa, in my view. Our, our choice is either to have a good one or a bad one. We must have one because there are too many people in the poorer areas, as you know. Whatever happens with the fourth industrial revolution, a lot of people still will rely on radio for a long time in their languages. That has to have a public broadcaster to support it, I think, and also TV and other things. So uh, I would not be in, in favor of, of selling off. Um, I, I hope that answers your question. Can you come back later? Uh, Honorable uh, Sadi? No, no. <laughs> uh, uh, afternoon, uh, Mr. Madison. What, 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 one of the reasons that uh, the SABC always say when they come here for presentation about the, the unsound financial status is this issue of unfunded mandates. What's your view on that? 
and uh, what would you recommend going forward to deal with this particular challenge? Because it's an issue that will always be there. The, 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 I want you to, to share with us your view on the relationship between the SABC and the regulator. What is the current state of affairs? Link to that one is the current state of affairs. And how do you see yourself improving uh, this current state of affairs? <coughs> the last one, uh, digital migration. Uh, I'm sure you're aware that we have missed the deadline. Uh, what's, what's your take? Uh, and, and, and what does it mean to the SABC? Thanks. Thank you, Honorable Telly. Um, firstly, on unfunded mandates, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was never convinced by what some of the uh, previous executives were saying. Uh, I think to some extent you have to, the SABC has to uh, uh, evaluate, particularly with sport. They say we have to do all these sports. Well, some are essential. Bafana Bafana is essential. Lots of things are essential, but not everything is essential. Um, and uh, so I think we have to be willing to, to, to take a decision, and, and I think we did this in this document, to say, if you want this and we cannot afford it, then somebody has to pay, otherwise we can't do it. But I think that the problem was blown out of proportion because, um, you know, they also said the funding model is no good, it must change. But the truth is we now know we weren't drawing as much in TV uh, license revenue as we should have. Now it's going up. It went up 19 million last month. So uh, until we are using every resource we can to get the most money we can, we shouldn't be coming asking other people for money. Um, but obviously there is a limit. Uh, sometimes we will have to say we cannot afford to do certain things. But I think so far the problem is something we are able to manage. I, I, I don't think it needs to be a crisis. Um, relations with the regulator, well, this, uh, um, um, we, we've, we've, we had a one full meeting and I had another one or two other side meetings with the regulator and they were all very positive. So I have no negative experiences with them. I will say that um, we are preparing, I, I'm co-chair of a, the broadcasting committee, subcommittee in, in, in the, on the board, and we are preparing a document to go to the regulator because there are uh, one or two uh, amendments we're going to ask them for, which are vital to, to the future of the SABC, and we can come to that if, if you'd like to. Um, and I will be um, uh, pleading with them for their support, and, and I, I think we have a good case, and I, and I hope they will uh, accept it. We can talk about that more if you wish. Digital migration, we're, we're very behind. Um, as you know, the multi-choice contract uh, tries to try ch tie our hand in this regard. That obviously has to change, um, and that's a bigger discussion you may want to ask me about. Um, but... Uh, um, yeah, we, we, we are getting behind, uh, and, and I, I must say, I think on the board, frankly, we felt in the six months we had with the interim board, we couldn't really solve digital migration. It's been going on all this time. But we'll be preparing so that the new board has to get straight into it with the cooperation of the ministry, because that's, that's an urgent matter, and the sooner we do it, the better. Also for the future of, of the information economy, as you know. Uh, Honourable Gongwell. Uh, uh, to this candidate, if the five minutes will be saved to reduce 20 minutes behind, I'm prepared to forfeit. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, two follow-ups, one and one. Honorable Fanda. Honorable Fanda. 
Thanks, Chair. Uh, in one of your responses, you mentioned uh, 19 million around license, uh, TV license fees. What was the, what, what, what did you mean? Was that about uh, how much you've been able to increase license fee um, collections? Milo. That's, that's, uh, um, look, these are unaudited figures, so, so uh, um, but yes, the, you know, it, it took, we had to cancel that outside uh, contract you, you're familiar with. Um, once we cancelled it, they became uncooperative with us. Uh, uh, they refused to hand over data, so our, our license collection, once we brought it in-house, did start to improve. Uh, but we were still felt hobbled. Our department kept complaining to us that they were still hobbled. Then, as you know, they, they took us to court and we won. For a change, I have to say, the SABC won a court case. Uh, and we were rather pleased about that. And we won. Costs were awarded in our favour. And, and they were obliged to hand over the data. As I understand it, since the data was handed over, and we're much more free to do it, we have increased 19 million in the last month. Uh, I would just add, for completeness sake, that doesn't mean we never use debt collectors. We'll still use licensed debt collectors when real debt collection issues arise, but it's now done almost entirely in-house. Uh, any follow-up? Thank you, Chair. If Mr. Matheson can just speak on the funding model of the SABC. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, um, I, you know, uh, you may remember Mr. Aguma came to this committee one, one day and said we must now start to, to uh, tax uh, cell phones, mo mobile licenses. That was not discussed in board. It was not a board decision. And I, I would not see the need for something radical like that. Um, uh, at this stage, if we, incre if we get our job right, which we've got to do, there's no alternative, our TV license collections will go up and our advertising collections will go up and also as we move to the multi-platform, things will be getting advertising revenue from the internet and other places slowly, but, but it'll become more and more important. So I don't see any need to change the, the funding model now myself. I can't speak for the board, but I personally see no need to change it. If we stick to our guns and improve what we're doing and do it properly and honestly, um, I see no need for the change. Obviously, there is a, you know, we get um, 75, 80% from, from advertising, we get 12% from, from uh, TV licenses, and we get a little bit from government. Um, we've always said uh, from this time that if the government wants something specific in addition, whether it's for education or another public purpose, purpose obviously we'll say to him that that's what it would cost. In a di if it's something added that we're not doing already. Uh, but other than that, I would not be in a hurry to change the, fu the funding model. Uh, raise your hand, Mama Shoba, if you want to talk. Yes, yes, ma'am. I was just missing uh, just a small question. Uh, as you have the experience in that uh, interim board, what is a good relation or efficient relationship with the staff of, of, of SAPC? If you do not have any, uh, any relationship with the staff, uh, how do you make sure that nature of a good environment within the staff happen for future. Can you just brief us? Okay, in, in brief. Thank you, Chair. I can be very brief. What we've been saying, because um, I'm also on the HR committee, is the, our policy must be that we're compassionate and professional. That's really been my mantra, compassionate and professional. If we see problems with staff being treated unfairly, and there are still cases of it, uh, we must act, we must resolve them. There, are st there, you know, there were so many before, there are still some left. We're trying to resolve all of them. But I say to the HR department in every meeting, be compassionate and professional. Thank People you must much. know that you support them, uh, um, but that w we, we, we have to go by the rules. Thank you very much, sir. Um, any questions to the panel? <laughs> Nothing. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Matheson. Uh, we're happy for your contribution.
The next person will, will no, will, will be Chifilwa Korombi. Chifilwa Korombi. Uh, number eight, Ms. Kumalo will, will follow. Mr. Mahu, remember we're saying Mr. Mahuba will replay, will be in number 10. Number 10, there was a discussion between Mm-hmm. 